along with the Steam Machine, the Steam Controller, Valve also announced their Steam Frame, which is their first VR headset since what, since the Valve Index. So it's, it's their new standalone VR headset that's powered by a four nanometer Snapdragon ARM CPU, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It has 16 gigabytes of unified LPDDR5X RAM, up to one terabyte of storage with a micro SD card slot, like your Steam Deck, like your Steam Machine. And as I mentioned, you could take your SD SD card with your games from each device, play your games, no problem. It has displays that are 2160 by 2160 and they're LCD pancake lenses. They range from 72 to 144 Hertz refresh rates, and they have about 110 degrees field of view. Now, in spite of it having an onboard computer, it is itself a computer like, you know, the MetaQuest 3, like Apple Vision Pro. It's also designed to be a streaming headset, so streaming from your PC to it. So your PC handles all the processing. It's just, you know, a display essentially. It has Wi-Fi 7 2 by 2 and dual Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz for streaming the VR video feed and for normal Wi-Fi to download games and, you know, stuff like that. It has inside out tracking for the controllers. Now to redesign controllers for this. So if you have old controllers from your valve index let's say base stations that you've bought also this is not compatible with that at all so brand new controllers like i said it is essentially computer itself so this is also running steam os on arm now kind of what everyone is talking about is they have this new fex cpu translation so fex cpu translation which allows you to run x86 games on their arm cpu another interesting thing about this is the goggles are actually modular themselves i think there's a compute unit there's a vision unit there's an expansion port at the bottom right now it just has black and white monochrome pass through if you want to let's say add an extra camera on the front for color pass through that's an option in the future maybe there's more peripherals though announce you know when the the Device actually comes out. Another big thing that people are talking about is something called foveated streaming. And also because it's foveated streaming, this needs to be hooked up to an external PC. This needs to be hooked up to your eventual Steam machine. So your Steam machine or your PC will handle the processing and then the foveated streaming will track where you're looking and it will allocate more of the streaming bandwidth to the area that you're looking. So it's not more intensive processing wise on your headset. The processing stays the same on your device, on your PC, on your Steam machine, but it's just the bandwidth of the streaming from your PC to your headset is more focused around where you're looking. From the brief, you know, hands-ons, from the brief testing that people were able to do, they weren't able to track it. But I mean, I think each reviewer maybe got like 30 or 40 minutes with it. So it's not like an extensive review, an extensive test like we'll get in Q1 next year. But it seems from what people are saying, it seems to be at least equal to foveated rendering, if not maybe slightly better. So I haven't heard about foveated streaming before. It seems like, you know, sort of new tech that Valve has invented for this device, along with the FX translation layer. It has speakers built into the headband of it. And I think they're actually force canceling speakers because they found that when they had traditional speakers in them, it would shake the headset, which would kind of like, as you're playing sounds in the headset, it would shake your vision and make it uncomfortable <laughs> To play in and once again we don't have a price for this from what they've told people they're aiming for under 900 maybe around 900 dollars for reference the MetaQuest 3 costs 500 dollars so yeah it looks like it's going to be an expensive device and much like you know the steam machine that we were talking about seems to be more targeted at pc enthusiasts consoles are generally seen as more casual gamers console gamers more casual gamers something like the meta quest line definitely more casual now if it is 900 dollars, and it's you know more expensive than a meta quest 3 but it's definitely a lot less expensive than an apple vision pro so yeah it's quite a bit of interest in tech in this headset you know from what you've seen of this does it sound like an exciting device could it possibly get you interested in the vr space if you like this video then you might like my video explaining the huawei air grab or you might like my review of the steam deck a subscribe would also be great